one, one other question I have is, what if I'm at a Mac and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get access to my PC at home? Okay. Well, that's, can I still do it from the Mac side? I mean, is this cross-platform? Yeah, you sure can. Um, Microsoft released um, remote desktop connection for the Mac, and it's a very easy install. We'll go ahead and uh, jump over to that. So even though I'm a Mac user, I could still connect to, to PC. The, the PC that I'm trying to help someone else to troubleshoot their computer. Right. Okay. So here's the other option for a shutdown. Uh, you can hit close and then you'll see um, this will disconnect your Windows session. Proceed by clicking OK. You click OK and right. it logs you out. That, sure. That's usually how I close it because I don't really want to go start, disconnect. That's way too many steps. It's intuitive. You click the X to yeah, close out the window. I, yeah, and I'm doing this remote desktop connection so I don't have to walk upstairs <laughs> to fix that computer. So why would I do some extra clicks? Yeah. All right, so from the Windows side, or from the Mac side, we'll go ahead and go back to the Mac OS. All right. Do, 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 do. Zing. And then hide that. Oh. All right. Uh, let's open Firefox. So you've already got the uh, you've already got the program downloaded there, the remote desktop program. That's the one that Windows provided for the Mac. The right. Client. So from I just did a Google search for we just did a Google search for um, remote desktop Mac right here on Google, and you can see it's the first hit. Um, Mm -hmm. so, so you can see it's the first hit right there click from Microsoft.com. So we'll go ahead and give it a click. Now, how much does this cost? Uh, this is free. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is download. It opens a DMG. You just drag it right into your applications folder, and you're ready to go. Excellent. It has the exact same options as its Windows counterpart. So we'll go ahead and uh, over here you under download. download, you just go ahead and click download. And then um, you have a bin option or an H. QX option. So if you want the, the Japanese version, you could download the Japanese version. Yeah, you just <laughs> click that, double click it. Uh, you need to stuff it expander, and I believe it needs a newer version of that, so you might need to update that. And okay. then, you know, just drag the uh, remote desktop into your applications folder. Okay. So that's everything for that. And then once you have that, you have the folder called remote desktop connections under. And then you just give this a double click, and it brings up this menu right here which looks oddly familiar to its Windows yes, it counterpart. Uh, here are all your options that you had earlier. General display, local resources, programs, performance. Just looks like, like it was made by the same company. It's like it was made by the same company. That, uh, that's very unusual for Microsoft. I know. <laughs> very unusual for them. So um, once again, uh, we'll go ahead and do the display. Um, it doesn't matter what size you go. We'll go ahead and stick with the 800 by 6, 600. And just that's so you probably can see better because it doesn't take up as much processing or, or network power, I think. Yeah. We'll go ahead and crank up the colors here just for um, effect to show. Just for effects, just okay. to see. We'll crank it all the way up to show you, you know, what maximum performance does look like while we can. Open it, main display, local resources. Um, the only thing I do have to say is local sound. Sound doesn't seem to work when you connect from the Mac because I believe it uses a Microsoft engine hmm. that allows it to connect Windows to Windows. So if you can get it to work, great, but I've not got it to successfully um, broadcast sound, either keep it on the local or move it to remote. So you're so. not going to play music on this computer right. that you have on your... Yeah, because I believe it wraps the sound in its own little engine and then sends it with the connection. So I don't think the Mac side has that Microsoft-only... Uh, it's probably some music industry encryption yeah, kind yeah, of thing. You yeah, can... <laughs> exactly. That's probably exactly what it is. So we'll just put this on do not play for now. All right. Um, disk drives, sure. I don't know exactly how disk drives work with the Mac, but you can experiment. It's usually pretty fairly simple. Keyboard, programs, start a program upon uh, login. That looks oddly familiar. And oh, then come back to one other thing on local resources. Now it does have things down here for about different keys. Uh, recognize the option key by clicking on a certain key. Mm -hmm. We're actually using a Windows keyboard here with this Vio uh, keyboard, uh, but on a Mac keyboard, you might have to you might want to adjust those to, for what's comfortable for you because the keys are in a different order. Right. On an Apple keyboard. Right. So we're going to go over here to performance, um, and then under the uh, connection speed, we'll just crank it up to custom and check all of them. So we want the desktop background, show the contents, uh, menu and window animation, themes, and then the cache for all the bitmaps. We'll just crank it all <laughs> on. Why not? You really want to break the Mac. See if the Mac can really handle yeah, it. Yeah, I want to see if it can handle it. We're going to put it to the test. So go ahead and give it a connect. 
your disk drives, we're going to say this is the, are you sure you wish to connect the drives? This is potentially unsafe. Yes, and this is the Mac side being like, I don't want to do this. I don't feel secure. I'm so, running with scissors. <laughs> we'll go ahead and give that an OK. And this will give you the login prompt. Uh, remember with the new edition from Windows, it actually sent your credentials across so you didn't see the screen. So here, you just do a normal login like you would Windows. So. Okay, just like you normally would when you were logging into that computer yourself. So, you know, you just give it the password. So this would mean the, the guest that you're trying to connect to, that you're trying to help out, if you're like a techie trying to provide help, has to give that person the ID and password. Right, and it also goes back to that um, add users at the very beginning. Um, you can, you know, only users you add to that list have the ability mm -hmm. to do this. So you could essentially, you know, use your login and then have a completely separate one for like IT help. Mm -hmm. Would be a very easy thing to set up. Or change your password briefly to something simple that you could give to the IT person. And then as soon as you're done with them helping you, then change your password back to the more, you know, encrypted one. Exactly. And uh, another thing as far as security, you have to have a password on your account to have this happen. If you're one of those people that runs your Windows computer without a password at all, mm. you cannot be connected to even if you are in the list of users. So even if you didn't have a password, I couldn't just type in your username and hit OK. It'll say something like uh, user account is not allowed for this. So you have to put in some password even if it's two yeah. characters. You have to have something in, in the What's terms nice, of password. It's a nice feature. For yeah, them. that's a good safety feature. Yeah, I think. so you know a lot of people run without a password. Um, it's foolish, but it's they can foolish, protect you a little bit just in case you did yeah, do that. Yeah, it'll say you can't log in, so you just give it a quick password. So that's mm -hmm. one more thing to think about. So let's we'll go ahead and uh, do the login here. And there we go. And this is nice because we're actually seeing this all in a window on this Mac. We're seeing the Apple up here. Oh, this is really freaky because we got a Windows window here. We have a Parallels, and Parallels window. is running down, is running down. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's just way too many computers on this terminal right This now. is the future of computing. A lot of people are believing it's more virtual computing uh, where you don't actually, you know, necessarily just run one operating system at the same time. Uh, you often run multiple ones because you're going to have one operating system doing one task and another one doing another task for security reasons. It can make you a lot safer. Yeah, and as far as the IT guy goes, you know, you can be watching uh, you know, four or five computers at the same time, you know, assuming your uh, LAN can handle the speed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can have them all doing a different task for you or just mm -hmm. monitoring their progress with, say, a download or install updates remotely so you never have to leave the comfort of your computer. So it's another situation where if I'm running a Mac with something like remote desktop, I can... Will allow you to use, like, a PC in a With sense. my desktop background on my computer and all the different icons and stuff that I've got. Wow. That's pretty cool. 